electric. Like many other people, I've been having some indecision as to whether to stay on the Agile tariff or whether to move and switch onto the Go tariff with Octopus Energy. So I have now swapped to the Go tariff. This video is going to cover the what, the why and the how I went about actually doing it. How to swap to Go, that was the easy bit. Uh, I basically just looked at the frequently asked questions on their website and followed the instructions for how to join Octopus Go. I clicked here saying sign up to Octopus Go. Then I found out what my day rate and standing charges would be. They vary from different parts of the country, so it's good to know what your costs are going to be before you actually go ahead. But there are some prerequisites for um, joining Octopus Go. You have to be a customer, so you either have to join or have previously joined. You have to have a smart meter. And yes, I'm already a customer and I've already got a smart meter. Then you have to hang on and wait a while while they receive their half hour meeting readings. Well, my meter is already working, so that wasn't a problem. And lastly, accept their terms and conditions. Well, that's easy, isn't it? And then you're good to go. Simple as that. Finally, you get to click, I'm already an Octopus customer, start my switch. And immediately my account updated to say that I was on the Octopus Go tariff and they're waiting for the readings to come through. Received an email to say that we've now switched across to the Octopus Go tariff. That was instantly on the same day. And then finally another email saying that I need to accept the terms and conditions. The last thing I did was choose the Go Faster tariff. Now that's invite only, so... You have to basically contact Octopus Energy and if they choose to invite you, then you get to select which Go Faster tariff you want because there are lots of them. I chose the three hour one from 3.30 in the morning. I chose the three hour tariff quite simply because we don't need four hours to heat the hot water, charge the car and charge the home storage battery. Three hours is plenty. It's also a little bit cheaper. It's only four and a half pence instead of five pence per kilowatt hour. So why not have it a little bit cheaper and just limit it to three hours? And lastly, the choice of time. Well, I delayed it as long as I could so that it was as close to the morning when we're actually getting up so that the hot water is heated just in time, the car is charged just in time, and also it's cheap rate energy if we happen to be up early in the morning as well. So even making a cup of tea first thing in the morning, that'll be on cheap rate energy. So why have I changed now? Because I've been pretty stubborn so far, haven't I? Staying with Agile as long as I possibly could, almost as if there's some sort of loyalty or kudos in staying as long as I can while the prices are high. Well, here it is. This is the reason. Quite simply, we ran out of energy. So with several dull days in a row, we didn't have enough solar energy to heat our hot water. So no hot showers, no washing up first thing in the morning, that's not good enough. So I boosted our hot water using an additional 3 kilowatt hours from the grid to give ourselves some hot water. That one day, one set of 3 kilowatt hours, that made a difference between £1 and £4 on the uh, Agile tariff versus 43 pence on the Go tariff. 60 pence difference in a single day for boosting our hot water just the once. That was enough to make me realize that cost-wise, it was worth changing now. So for me, the last straw was basically we needed to charge our mini electric. We'd been for a drive uh, on one day and then we needed to go out again the next day. But there was not enough solar energy during the day to recharge the car. So normally you would have to charge from the grid overnight using cheap rate energy. But there just isn't any. Overnight now isn't the cheap period. The cheapest period during the day is about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. There is no cheap rate. Octopus Agile is really expensive now, continuously. And therefore, without a cheap period, I felt restricted. I felt as though I couldn't charge the car, and I didn't like that feeling. I know it's not the truth. I know I could just charge if I wanted to, but it makes you feel like you can't, because if it's not cheap, it's not good for the grid. So during the summer, I just don't have a problem because I have so much solar energy, all of our needs are met during the day. It's only now that it's autumn and winter that our needs are changing so that we need to charge things up during the night on a cheap rate tariff. Agile worked previously last winter because there were plunge prices. There were uh, periods overnight where it was very cheap, even cheaper than the Go tariff. So Agile worked last winter. Right now, though, we're maxing out on the cap figures of 35 pence a kilowatt hour and the wholesale prices during the peak periods are as high as two pounds a kilowatt hour. That is just crazy. So now is the time to swap to go. 
And now that I've done it, it just seems so cheap. Uh, other energy companies and tariffs out there seem much more expensive. So Octopus Energy and the Go tariff, definitely a very economical choice. One of the downsides of using cheap rate energy overnight is quite simply, I have to turn the battery off. If the battery is set to carry on discharging, and I'm charging my electric car overnight or heating hot water, it will take all of the energy out of the battery and drain it completely. So if the battery is set to not discharge, then basically my base load in the house will be used from the grid. As you can see, my base load is about 100 watts. So 100 watts over an hour, that's a tenth of a kilowatt hour. If your base load is 500 watts, that would be half a kilowatt hour every single hour. So I have that now additional consumption from the grid at cheap rate because I need to match the period where I'm going to charge things up that's the 3.30 till 6.30 in the morning, I need to match that with the battery set to not discharge energy. With the Go standing daily charge amount slightly higher than the Agile one, I think it's um, four or five pence higher, that means my monthly bill is definitely going to be higher in September because I'm using more energy for the month and I've got a higher standing charge. So yes, my bill is going to increase, but I need it to because I need that flexibility. I've got to wonder, was I the last person to swap across from Agile to Go? Did I have to turn the lights out as I left the Agile tariff? Anyone out there? Are you still on the Agile tariff? Let me know in the comments below. Really appreciate it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope there was something useful there. See you again soon for another video on solar, batteries, electric cars, all that good stuff. See you again soon. Bye for now.